In this video, I'm going to show you how to make text entry boxes mandatory. I got an email from one of my clients who was asking a question about text entry boxes. They wanted to make sure that the learners were filling them out because of course what he was discovering was that some learners were not typing in the mandatory information and therefore getting the full experience that they had designed in their e-learning. So I'm going to show you today a way you can use um, advanced actions and variables to ensure that uh, users are typing in something before continuing with the rest of your e-learning project. Let's get started. So let me show you what I've got on this slide here. Here I've got just simply a text caption where I'm giving them instructions to enter their name. And we have a text entry box here. And I haven't really done much to customize this here. It's just default text entry box, but I'll show you how I change it. In addition, I've created this shape item here, which is completely transparent. And I've added a second custom state to it called incomplete. When we select that, you'll see that it has, you know, a rounded rectangle. I chose green just because it's in the background here. And just a message just to reinforce that, you know, please enter the name and ID before proceeding. And we have a next button as well. And that's actually where I'm going to run most of this validation process. And then, of course, the rest of your e-learning project occurs after that. The other thing I did uh, up front, of course, was to turn off the uh, theme, the skin, you know, all the, the built-in controls in Captivate. Anyone who's been using Captivate for a while knows that if you present them playback controls, they'll, of course, be able to skip anything that you create on slide here. So I'm just using whatever controls I give them up front and turning these off. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is work with this text entry box. We don't want the built-in submit button. So we're going to go to the actions tab here and unselect show button. We also don't want on success, focus, lost, or a shortcut key for this. We want it just to, uh, you know, capture the information, but we don't want any actions associated with this. So I'm going to set everything to no action and I'm going to delete the shortcut key here. Uh, in this case here, we have a variable text entry box one, but I'm actually going to store the contents in my own user variable. The reason for this is that text entry box one isn't very meaningful. So I'm going to create a variable that's meaningful. I'm going to call this underscore uh, name, student name, we'll call this, or learner name underscore name there. So that's uh, clear what this is. So once I've got that all set up, um, I need another variable as well. So we're going to go to the project drop down menu and select variables here. We can actually delete text entry box if we're there and just have our learner name. But I'm going to add this new variable that I wish to create and I'm going to call it underscore null and I'm not going to give it any value. That's the important thing here. This is going to be used for comparison. So I'm going to compare learner name with underscore null and you know see if they're equal the same thing to determine whether someone's typed something in or not. So I'm going to go ahead and save that variable and we can close the variables window. So we need an advanced action to take care of that uh, condition that we're going to check for. So let's click on the project drop down menu and select advanced actions. We'll give this a name. We'll call it validate underscore name. And we need to make this a conditional advanced action. So we select the conditional tab checkbox here. Now we're going to look at our variables. We're going to compare them. So variable learner name, see if it is equal to the variable null. In other words, is learner name left blank? If it is, we're going to do the following actions. We're going to change the state of our feedback item that we created to its incomplete message state. 
Now I'd like this to return to normal, but I don't want it to turn, return to normal too quickly. So I'm going to delay the next actions by a certain number of seconds. Depending on the length of text you're putting in that incomplete message, uh, it could be longer or shorter. You can experiment with what works there. Four seconds is probably enough to read it and comprehend what, what's being said there. And then I'm going to change the state of that feedback caption back to normal or back to transparent, if you will. Now, if this is not true, if the learner has typed something in that field, we're free to go to the next slide. So we can put that in the L section here. So we'll just select go to next slide. I can save this as an action, click OK, and click close. All we need to do is select our next button and under actions, make sure that we are executing advanced actions. And of course, there's only one script for this project, so it's selected by default there. Let's test this out and make sure it works. We'll preview this in HTML5. So here we are. If I press next, nothing happens. I see this message here. It goes away after a few seconds. So no matter how many times I press the next button, it's not going to let me move forward until I type in something here. So if I type in my name, press next, I now get to go to the rest of my e-learning project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.